上当百年，欺世大官。Hello, everyone. It's Michael here. Previously, we talked about the stories of Tsai Hsien and Xiang Jingyu, and learned that the Chinese Communist Party officials typically had complex sexual relationships since the party was established, and many of them had affairs with various people. This year marks the hundred-year anniversary of the CCP, and the Chinese government is spreading propaganda on its glorious history. Today, let's look at the true past of the CCP to see if they really are as glorious as they claim. In order to gain an understanding of sexual relationships within the party, let's have a look at the following story. In 1937, Li Keqiang served as the director of the Communist Eighth Route Army Office in Beijing and was responsible for receiving military payment. Medicine, supplies, etc., issued by the national government. On one occasion, when government authorities reviewed the medical list of the Eighth Route Army, they found that the number of medicines for the treatment of venereal disease was quite large. The agent was surprised and asked Li Keqiang, "Are there many people in your army who have this disease?" Li's knowledge of medicine is very poor, so he can say nothing about it. But he tried to explain that our army is the people's army. And we take good care of lives. The health department not only treats soldiers but also the locals. The economy is not too great in northern Shaanxi, and health conditions are poor. So we ask for more medicine to treat common people. We don't know if Li Keqiang's explanation finally convinced the agent, but we don't believe it. As when Li said, "Rural health conditions are poor. The masses have a lot of disease." He mixed general diseases in with venereal disease instead of singling it out. We know that sexually transmitted diseases are caused by unsafe sexual practices. At that time, people in Shaanxi were quite conservative and did not have extra money or time to do such things. How can it be possible that venereal disease is so widespread? Obviously, behind Li's vague explanation hides the Yan'an Communist Party lewdness. We all know that in China today, Communist Party officials have many mistresses together with venereal disease. Which can be traced back to the kilns of Yan'an. The origin dates back to the 1930s and 40s. Tempted by the Communist Party's utopian ideal of social propaganda, some young intellectuals went thousands of miles to the Communist Party's stronghold, Yan'an, in search of the so-called communist paradise. With more people arriving, housing became tight, and there were no conditions for married couples to have separate rooms. So an odd rule was established. Couples had to complete an application and then pay fifty cents so they could have their own room. One of the most appealing aspects of Marxist theory to these young intellectuals at the time was the rejection of the traditional concept of family, that is, the pursuit of sexual liberation. In the illusory communist paradise created by Marx and Engels, women would be completely emancipated from domestic work; their children would be sent to nurseries and kindergartens; they would be raised by society. And there would be public canteens for meals. Women would no longer be dependent on men, and would no longer be the private property of men. If this happens, families will gradually disappear, and the bonds of marriage will be loosened or even dissolved. To put it bluntly, eventually children will have no idea who their parents are. After the October Putsch in Soviet Russia, this led to the development of the glass of water theory of sexuality. The satisfaction of one's sexual desires should be as simple as getting a glass of water. In a nutshell, glass of water means that sex between a man and a woman is as common as drinking a glass of water and changing the water whenever you want, as long as you don't find the glass dirty. After the founding of the Communist Party of China, this was accepted wholesale, both in the Rajin Soviet area and in the Yan'an period. In other words, at that time in Yan'an. For men and women to have sex was as simple and natural as a person thirsty to drink water, no qualms. So the phenomenon of dewy couples is not uncommon. It is said that the most common thing was to play gorilla, which is similar to dating. That is, a man met a woman. The man asked, "Want to have a gorilla?" The woman said, "Okay," and the two of them went into the grove to do it. Communist Party officials were not ashamed of such behavior. And thought it was quite fashionable. As young and beautiful progressive women kept coming to Yan'an, top Communist Party officials became even more lustful. The bandit leaders, who already had lives, began a revolution and launched the first round of wife swapping. 
The top leader Mao Zedong first abandoned his third wife Herd Zijin and got involved with a woman from Shanghai who was a master of love affairs. Her name was Lan Ping, also called Jiang Qing. We have already told the story of Jiang Qing's previous affairs with several communist cadres and celebrities in our past episode, but with her talent as an actress, she was able to capture the playboy Mao. We will continue our story in the next episode. Please support our channel by subscribing and sharing with your family and friends. Bye for now.